Hi! Today we're working on a centerpiece with seasonal flowers for the month of January. So January for a lot of people, you think there aren't any flowers around. That might be true here in Michigan, but the flower markets are filled with them. So um, I shared with you earlier five of my favorites. I'm using those key ingredients and showing you how I would put them together in an arrangement. Um, yeah, so we're just, let's get started. So, I have just a container here. It's got a flower frog in the bottom of it. And I'm gonna bend up not a very big piece at all. <laughs> I've got chicken wire. I use scraps whenever I can save it. Um, I put it in there and then I will tape it in for some extra support before adding the water into the centerpiece. And this time of year is really great for dry flowers. So, you know, even though there's nothing growing in us, you can still get some local stuff and some really cool textures outside. As well as in the fresh flower markets, um, my wholesalers, they have all sorts of dry flower options for you. If you're not like me and can't go out and forage them. So, um, for example, I've got these which are dried. You know, if you don't use something, the thing I love about dry flowers is they, they last for the next event. You know, sometimes you just need a couple little snippets to throw in a boutonniere or in a corsage, something like that. Okay, another ingredient that I have here is hellebores, which I, I love them. They have great antique color and texture, um, kind of green in the middle with a little bit of color on the edge. They are a winter flower and they carry into the spring, but like, look at I mean, this is one stem, so you're gonna get several blossoms on that one stem, and then this, like, it's just a great, like, curve off your arrangement. So the shape is really great. They naturally droop, so you're not having wilted flowers if you get an arrangement with these in it. One of my um, go-to standard roses, it's a quicksand rose, and it's just like a kiss of blush. Blends really well with um, beige. It's an awesome, neutral flower, and my philosophy is I build on layers of neutrals and then just a few pops of colors. Let my um, colors be smaller statement flowers normally. Of course, I break every rule at some point, but that's generally what I do. Um, I've got some great silver textures here, some more dried grasses. I did get this for my wholesaler, but you can get these. I've seen them growing in people's yards. Unfortunately, I'm not friends with those people. I thought they might not appreciate it if I just pull over and clip them from their yards. Um, let's see, another great one is freesias. I've got some white freesias back here. They're available year-round pretty much, but I like them. Well, right now, I'm really liking them. So I used them for an event last month too, and they were just a really beautiful little addition. So with that being said, let's get started. So I'm gonna start with my hellebores. I like a little bit of green that it's gonna add. I'm gonna start building out my shape and then I will start layering in other flowers, bringing in the textural pieces last. So I am using the chicken wire for a little extra support, but I'm really sticking these down into my flower. necessary but not so to start I give myself shape usually it's triangular one two three and then I start adding in my focal flowers as my next step Just a 
these kind of follow that same triangular pattern that I started here as I filmed. Okay. Just a couple more hell bars because I don't like the way that it looks in the center. It feels really bare to me. Anytime I work, I am always either thinking about tri creating triangles or the bunny system. So every flower has a little bunny or a triangle. flowers when I can because then I'm not wasting them. I'm just simply saving them for another project. Like these tallow berries. I don't remember what I bought these for, but did you them? Yeah. <laughs> 